Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Kramer with Microsoft, Project Solutions Specialist. I'm here with George Bullock and Scott Daly, and we're going to start our Agile and Traditional Project Management webcast now. So first, I'd like to introduce George to talk about himself and his background. George, go ahead. Thank you, Mike. Hi, everybody. Thanks for attending. Uh, we appreciate your time. My name is George Bullock. I'm a product marketing manager here at Microsoft, and I'm the product marketing manager for Microsoft Project as well as Microsoft Planner. I was at Microsoft from 2000 to 2013, and I was one of the early adopters and evangelists for Agile at Microsoft starting in 2003, and uh, that was very exciting. And since then, I've done a ton of uh, software development work using Agile. In 2013, I left because I wanted to get some more experience at smaller companies and see how Agile was being used there and how cloud software was being developed in a continuous release environment. So I spent a couple of years at DocuSign and uh, two or three years at a company called ChangePoint, which actually makes a project portfolio management system. Microsoft reached back out to me and uh, offered this position as a, a PMM for project and planner, which is like a dream job to me because I love this space. And I'm, it's great being at Microsoft, which especially under Satya Nadella is really a dynamic and interesting company. Hey, thanks, George. Uh, this is Scott Daly. I work for Wikrosoft, a senior account executive. Uh, I have also uh, managed agile development teams, and I, we want to emphasize this between George and I because as much as we are both very much steeped in PMI and project management and we're working with Microsoft Project, um, we are both also uh, strong advocates of agile. Um, and I think hopefully if um, we do what we're supposed to do during this webinar, when you come out of this, you'll see that um, Agile and what we think of as traditional project management are, in fact, maybe not opposed. Maybe you have found them to be opposed in your organization, um, but in fact, they go very well together. Would you say that's fair, George? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to ask George questions always when he's taking a drink of water, because then <laughs> that'll lead to a, a pause and a swallow. All right, do we want to, who's got the deck? I have the deck. Uh, I can't necessarily see it. Oh, Are okay. you presenting yeah, it? Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's what you know. Go. Awesome. So um, we've been through introductions just kind of briefly. We are going to talk about the state of the market, again, briefly, Microsoft's perspective on that. Uh, and then we're going to spend the bulk of time demonstrating. Um, I'm not exactly sure whether we can take textual questions. I guess we should have tested that ahead of time. Sorry. Um, but certainly we're going to have all of our email and contact information. So if there are any follow-up questions, we'll be able to return and uh, make sure that we get them answered. So again, I want to be, I want to be clear. Um, we, <laughs> we're going to have a very limited kind of amount of slides, uh, a total of six, I think, as you can see. Um, and then from there, we are going to uh, uh, go straight into demonstration some of our new features in project and uh, also how to connect project online to uh, an instance of Jira. So go ahead, George. Okay. Let's talk uh, briefly about the state of the market for what, what we might really talk about is work management uh, because with things like accidental project managers, uh, informal project managers, everybody's managing work these days. At Microsoft, we're really excited about the opportunity to help people do that. And that's because we start from Office 365 and the Microsoft Cloud, which is an enterprise-ready platform for collaboration, document management, teamwork, and also uh, because professional project is, is built on Office 365, we, we, we believe we can provide customers uh, a top to bottom value prop in this space. As this slide shows, uh, everything really is built on Office 365 and the Microsoft Cloud. Starting from the top, our MS Project Premium online licenses provide full support for the gamut of project portfolio management functionality. Everything from demand management, 
resource capacity planning, efficient frontier uh, scenario, what if analysis, uh, basically everything a company needs to know what's happening across the enterprise, what are our resources doing? What's, what's the, the demand? demand? <laughs> So I'm like, we're having a, uh, a infinite loop, uh, which there we go. Wow, but it was it was a great infinite loop. It was, it, was, infinite it was your voice, George. Yes. So that talks about the top of our pyramid here and our project pre premium uh, licenses afford the full range of PPM functionality. The next level is what we might well, call work, work management. And that's where project professional and the project uh, client come in. And this is really sort of at the PMO level, allowing uh, PMO organizations and project managers a structured way to uh, take incoming priorities, assign resources across projects, visualize status and resource capacity usage across projects, have a structured and governed way to plan these projects and get them going with teams and uh, project managers. So I, I see, George, you've got Jira off to the side on this. What, what, and Visual Studio on the inside. What is, what is, what's up with that? Well, we believe that Visual Studio provides a superior uh, product for software development and for managing uh, your end-to-end -end DevOps pipeline. But the fact is that Jira software is in wide usage uh, across industries and organizations. And we don't want to take workers out of that product when they're in there happily working. The, the key is that Jira itself is a, is, a, is a solid work management platform for software development. But it's important to get that data into a centralized project portfolio management and work management solution so that those projects and the time being spent on those projects, the resources being used on those projects, is visible alongside all the other work that a company is doing. So I, th I think that's one of the things that we'll, we'll see kind of repeated in this, in this hour, eh, George, right, is that, look, there's an ag there are agile development tools, whether they be Visual Studio or Jira, that we don't want to move people out of. We recognize they're doing things and they're doing them well, but that we still operate in a world where higher level executives want to know when things are going to be done, what's going to be done, and how much they're going to cost. Is that fair? Yes, that's 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 absolutely right. Um, sometimes people talk about BA, big A agile and little a agile, uh, where big A agile is something that if you say the wrong thing about it, you get burned at the stake. That's the way I like to see that. So software development is more in the big A agile, where uh, teams and companies might be more mature in their use of agile, more strict about how they use agile and also are thinking about a DevOps pipeline for a continuous release of value to customers. Little A Agile is something where you're seeing more Agile adoption in non-software projects, whether that's in an IT department or a marketing department. And one of the things we're gonna to show today is how we've provided Agile functionality in the project client. Uh, we, we released that for the first time in October of last year, and we've done uh, some great enhancements since then. Uh, but we recognize that Agile is, is more and more being used across departments uh, in an organization. And so we, we want to support that where people are taking the best of Agile in their context and using it to manage their work. Down into the project collaboration, this is where we're really excited about the fact that Microsoft Office provides a, a full suite of integrated applications and tools uh, for managing work at the team level. Planner is a key to this. Uh, if you're not familiar, Planner is a simple visual work and task management tool for teams, fully integrated with Microsoft Teams, which is a, which is a place where teams can create a a hub for work. They can manage their planner plans in there. They can have conversations in there. They can manage their documents in there. And all of this built on, all of the document management features built on SharePoint, enabling people to collaborate on documents using the very familiar tools, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And so we're really excited about 
being able to offer a full collaboration platform and then going up the pyramid to the power of Microsoft Project Professional and Premium. So the pharaohs live at the top of the pyramid. Is that right, George? The pharaohs do, but more and more in this world, uh, if, you, if, you, if you look from the bottom up, I think companies' hopes are there are two things. One is that tool proliferation is real. So uh, tools like Trello, Asana are easy to adopt and easy to ha have spring up virally around the company, which has some benefit because teams like these simple user experiences and sort of the consumer-oriented UX user experience. But for ID departments and for the pharaohs, this means data all over the place, uh, uh, tools of perhaps questionable uh, enterprise readiness being used. And so one of the things we, we, we are looking to help uh, organizations combat is this tool proliferation. By providing tools that give teams these easy consumer-oriented user experiences, but still tied into a, an overall system. The other thing is that from the bottom up, as much as possible, you want governance to be opaque. In other words, teams don't want to feel like they're constrained to using a complex tool or a very constrained set of processes. At the same time, from the top down, governance needs to ha be visible and transparent, and especially reporting needs to be available to the people at the top, no matter how the teams are working. So we kind of think of this as teams get to work the way they want but leadership gets the governance and visibility that they need to deliver results. Hey, George, I want to, I want to thank you for not openly correcting me and pointing out that pharaohs don't live in pyramids. Uh, no, I think actually, it's the they opposite. Are, they only dead uh, Yeah, pyramids. and, uh, you know, thank you for not pointing that out, for quietly pointing it out here. Uh, but I never let facts get in the way of a good metaphor. Um, I think that's a metaphor for right, today's world. Right, yeah, yes, right, <laughs> yes. All right, so I, I think people are probably really excited about seeing the new Agile with a small a features in project. Yes, absolutely. And uh, your use of small a here is important because uh, the point is we are not through these features in uh, the project client and project online trying to displace teams that are successfully using something like Visual Studio Team Services. We want those products to still be used and integrated with the overall PPM system. But, uh, and let's switch to, uh, can everyone see that? Uh, yes, we can. Thanks, Great. George. So this is a view of a, of a typical uh, project project, but being viewed uh, through maybe a, a, an agile lens, in this case a scrum lens. What I'm looking at here is, a, here's a traditional Gantt chart. And I'm simply looking at it through the lens of first, a sprint planning board, which has allowed me to allocate tasks across sprints. And as we can see here, I have a set of two week sprints. Uh, and I can, I can go ahead and allocate more of those. I can set my own uh, uh, iteration rhythm. In other words, I could use three weeks or one week or four weeks. Two weeks is kind of the industry norm right now. So here I'm able to drag and drop tasks into sprints. Uh, and, and this allows me to allocate, uh, you know, do pre-planning to the extent necessary. Some big A agilists would now burn me at the stake for uh, suggesting this, but more and more multi-sprint planning is an important part of of how an Agile team works. From there, I can then actually get into the sprint board and here's my current sprint. Uh, and teams can now use these boards in their daily stand-up meetings, uh, which allows them to track tasks across a workflow. I can add my own columns here if I want. Uh, here I'm just using a, a, a very simple next up in progress done workflow. 
So George, I, 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 you know, kind of from Microsoft's perspective, would you would you see a a project manager? And I think it's important that when you kind of comment on little A versus big A, that we're, that we're clear about it, um, because we don't want to set this up as a competitor to Visual Studio or to Jira. Um, but would you would you see a project manager um, in a room with their team? doing this on screen? Would you see this being done as part of planning in the background? How do you kind of envision that? Well, from my experience, what usually happens is uh, at the beginning of a sprint, and let's let's do a one minute overview of Agile. I'm sure everybody's fairly familiar, but the way I see Agile is you have a list of work that needs to be done called the backlog. And this work tends to be written and and oriented toward customer value. So rather than having tasks like set up development machines or write the SQL queries, you have user stories um, like uh, that are more pointed at the customer. So you have this list of work, you get together every two weeks at the beginning of a two week period, you choose some work to do in a sprint and that's what you would do in a sprint planning board. And then every day you get together and you review what's happening in the sprint. So you, you might use a column like next up to say these are ready to move into development, uh, move things into progress, in progress and move things into done. Then at the end of two weeks, you demonstrate the work that you've done, uh, ideally to the customer or, or internal stakeholders, and then you do another planning and lather, rinse, repeat. So the way we envision this being used is in the daily standup and in the planning meetings, the project manager, sometimes called the product owner, will open this view and then, first of all, use it to plan sprints, and then on a daily basis, use it to ask the team, hey, what's, wh what have you done? Uh, uh, what's, what, are the, what are the status of the user stories? And then move them across the board uh, as necessary. That's a very common workflow, and that's how we uh, envision this being used and are seeing it being used. I see. So that's that. So if you, if you were then to contrast kind of what you're presenting with Big A Agile, and I think again, I think it's important that we that we understand that this is going to plug into a larger structure. Um, that project is not being positioned to replace certain other Agile tools. How what do you see in Big A Agile that isn't this maybe as well represented in this as as it would be in Visual Studio, for example? So I uh, one of the keys there. Uh, in a big A Agile effort, especially a software one, there will be much more integration with things like the source code management system. Oh, interesting. The, uh, the, the development environments like uh, Visual Studio, the client, um, and the overall DevOps pipeline. So we're not trying to replicate that behavior here because we do feel like tools like VSTS, Visual Studio Team Services, it is ideal for that because that provides the deep integration into source code control, into DevOps that is necessary. Now, I, I'm going to be demoing a connector with, with Jira. Are, are you going to be mad at me about that? Because here we are at Microsoft talking about Jira. I, I need to know before no, I do this. No, I won't be mad at you at that. I, I, I will say that I believe Visual Studio Team Service is a highly competitive uh, Absolutely. platform yes. for software development. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, we... You better stretch, George. Yeah. Uh, at Microsoft, we believe in customer solutions. And so when customer value involves making sure that tools that are being effectively used in the company can be integrated into our uh, collaboration platform and project management tools, that helps the customer, and that's what we're about. We're a very customer-obsessed company. And so, no, I, I will not be mad at you. Oh, thank you. I'll kick you under the table. Right, silently. I'll burn you out the steak later. Yes, that's, oh, please. That's, that's that's a little over the top. I'm sorry. Steak burning, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I, yeah, we'll you just uh, leave it to make me real uncomfortable, like yeah. put me in a, a hot room or something. I don't know. Now, let, let me show you one other thing that, uh, that kind of sets this apart from a, a, a JIRA. So in Visual Studio, I mean, in, in Microsoft Project, we realize we're dealing with the need to manage tasks in a way that's more PMI oriented. And so an important thing here is this, this view of tasks 
these aren't separate tasks. These are just project tasks. I have all the advanced capabilities of Microsoft Project. And one of the things we've added recently uh, to, to support this kind of hybrid approach is the ability to decide on a percent complete setting for the moving of cards uh, or tasks across the board. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so this allows you, you, you can leave these at blank, which means that moving cards across the board does nothing but changes their status field that says what, what lane they're in. Now, see, this is really going to be interesting for anybody that has any familiarity with project. This is really quite a shift in how, this, how tasks are treated. Yes, this is quite a shift, but not, but it is not orthogonal to, to use a Microsoft term that we often use very loosely. It's very impressive. Yes, thank you. Uh, I got a little shiver. I don't know what orthogonal. it means, but but here it is. It works. Yeah. Uh, so this is just another Microsoft Project project, and that's something really to keep in mind because any reporting you're doing cross projects, any resource management you're doing for this project is just as being done in other projects. So executives still get the governance and visibility they need while the team gets to work the way they want. And here's how this percent complete helps there because as I move uh, tasks across the board, I can automate that to, to set the percent complete uh, so the team, again, is, is visually managing work, but the project manager isn't losing uh, the, the ability to manage things uh, in the traditional Microsoft project way. And there's one more thing I'd like to show you there, and that's really what we're seeing a lot is what we call hybrid project management. And so here you see I have, I have a pretty robust uh, work breakdown structure, there's dependencies, there's start and end dates, there's estimates. And I, I don't want to manage this whole thing on a board because some of it just is more, uh, to, to use the, the word, what more better managed in a waterfall way. But as you can see here, some of these tasks I've set to uh, manage, uh, to have this agile field set to yes and what that means is that when i go to my boards for example my sprint planning board i'm not seeing the entire work breakdown structure i'm only seeing those tasks which i've chosen to manage on a board and that way as the project manager i can focus in on what's best managing in an agile fashion i can plan sprints i can on a daily basis uh, uh, run sprints, and so here's those those uh, tasks I put into uh, sprint one, and I can also do reporting on these tasks uh, with some built-in agile uh, reports. Yet at the same time, I haven't lost my ability to manage a larger Gantt chart, and and so that's a really valuable uh, thing where we're. we're looking to provide with this functionality is this hybrid work management because this is something a lot of customers are doing. So I do have one more small detailed question I just want to ask um, because if anybody's listening and is thinking okay I'm still unclear about kind of the lines between the agile that project supports versus the agile that a, a, a an agile development environment supports. Are there story points supported in, in the product today? That's a good question. We have chosen at this time not to build in deep support for sort of safe framework ways of managing Safe things. being? Uh, the scaled agile framework. Yes. Uh, where there are perhaps epics, features, stories. You could, of course, do that using uh, a hierarchy in um, in uh, uh, Microsoft Project, but and we also allow filtering for things like uh, I can choose a summary task. In this case, that uh, let me go back to here. So when I look at a board, um, I can choose to filter by summary task, which can serve as a way of having, uh, you know, of having uh, a hierarchy, but. And I could also add custom fields to track story points, but a tool like Visual Studio Team Services 
or uh, JIRA is much more built around non-time-based uh, estimation. Uh, now, these projects that you're managing using Agile in Microsoft Project still support time, task status updates, and all the things that team members might be doing on their own, like managing their time sheet. And then I think, as you'll show in your JIRA integration, mm -hmm. uh, time still does matter over in other tools. So through an integration, we want to be sure that uh, if people are managing time in JIRA, one of the keys is bringing that time into Microsoft Project so that your time and cost data is all in one place. Yeah, okay, awesome. Um, is that it, George? That's it. You want to turn this over to me to demo? Sure. Uh, bear with us. We're going to transition uh, laptops. So if, we, if we're gone for a second, we're trying to figure it out. So let's see. I now looks like I should be able to. Hmm. Maybe I'm not. Just one second. Looks good, Scott. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, at this point, George has kind of walked through the uh, the advances in, in Microsoft Project Professional itself, uh, which is focused primarily, as we all know, on, on individual projects for the most part. Um, Microsoft has, along with Microsoft, uh, and as we've said, has recognized that um, there are a lot of teams working according to agile methodologies and they're using tools like JIRA and Visual Studio to, to manage those, and we don't want to disrupt that. Um, that's created these challenges for the traditional PMO because the traditional PMO still reports up to the pharaohs who live apparently at the top of pyramids, according to George, um, along the classical terms of dates and cost and scope. So the question then becomes, well, how is the PMO going to continue to, to manage things the way that their executives want them to. Uh, and the answer is kind of unsurprisingly, not to try to force everybody that's using Agile into a waterfall scenario or to force everybody that's using waterfall into an Agile scenario, um, but instead to uh, integrate the two in a way that makes some sense. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drill in. I, I'm going to assume everybody's familiar with Project Center in this. I mean, maybe I maybe I shouldn't make that assumption. Maybe I should talk about this real briefly. Um, this is a list of all the efforts going on within a particular PMO or in a particular uh, portfolio. And over here on the side is kind of a classic Gantt chart. I'm going to drill into uh, e-commerce portal development, which is a project. And I'm going to look at that project kind of online without opening Project Pro. So uh, the first thing that I want to call your attention to in this is that, it, as George was saying, this is, in fact, a hybrid style project. And what that means is you have some of your traditional elements of waterfall surrounding uh, agile work. So you have your traditional elements of defining the scope, going through getting, going through getting sponsorship, doing the kinds of things that are part of an initiation phase in a project, analysis, et cetera. But at some point, um, this is going to become, uh, as we say, an agile project. And we're actually going to begin to work on developing some, some code in this case, although it could be anything that's well suited to agile development. Um, and so you can see down here, what we have is the development phase or, or uh, 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 summary task. And underneath that, you have develop code. For those of you who are familiar with agile, these are uh, user stories that then have tasks linked underneath them. So, okay, that's all great and good, but how does this work in an environment where we need to be connected to a JIRA environment? Well, the good news is, oops, sorry, that we have built a connector 
Um, as you can see, we also have connectors to uh, Visual Studio. We also have connectors to Planner, but for the sake of brevity in this call, we're going to stick with Jira. Um, and so what we have, for those of you who are familiar with it, is, is a Jira environment that is exactly the subset of tasks that are part of uh, the, the proper project. So over here, you'd have your development team uh, working along their, with their user stories and um, doing and managing their work the way they uh, see. You may recognize this from what you saw in project. Only over here in Jira, you get kind of a lot more functionality that developers are used to seeing and working with when they manage Agile. So you have your to-do, you're in progress, you're done, you drag your cards around. Now, the great thing about the integration is, is that let's suppose that we have this database task one of the things that the PMO says is, listen, we understand that you guys are working in story points. We understand that that's the way you estimate things, that that's the way you measure throughput. That's fantastic. But we really need to make sure that um, we have some notion of time coming back into our project schedule. Otherwise, we can't, uh, we can't say what this costs. We can't perform any kind of earned value analysis, for example. Um, over in Jira, uh, if you have the environments board, you can log work. You are able to come in and uh, set in, uh, include how much time you spent, and in this case, it's not uh, configured this way, but you are able to also say, um, let me uh, say how much work is left, et cetera, all the kinds of things that you're used to doing with Project Online, where you're able to say, well, uh, you know, I've spent eight hours on this task, and I know that we estimated it for 500 hours, but I, you know, I think it's going to take a thousand hours now that I've spent eight hours on it. We're able to take that data into Jira itself so that your developers are not leaving the Jira environment and we're able to bring that back into project proper um, for either automatic or manual approval by the project managers. Now, how this works, of course, shouldn't be any surprise to anybody. Everybody kind of wants different things. You can integrate this time at the user story level. You can integrate this time at the epic level. You can choose to integrate this on a schedule that is um, close to real time, but not really. Um, so we shouldn't set expectations for that. But Or it can be less commonly brought back into project schedules, depending on what your workflow is. But, but the gist is, is that this team then operates completely in JIRA at the same time you can come back as a project manager and go into your project. You can see how the work that is being done over in JIRA is going to impact your overall schedule. Um, you can use traditional tools uh, to go down and say, look, uh, that's my task summary. I want to see that as a project manager, but I really want to see what people are seeing uh, from a JIRA perspective. That is to say what they think their work is. And you can see we can just create some filters that enable you to, as a project manager, see both the JIRA world and uh, the progress against your overall project, again, in your case, without ever needing to leave Project Online. Uh, so we think this is a, a pretty solid and neat solution to this problem uh, that we think a lot of organizations are facing, which is the rise of Agile in the midst of a, a traditional set of expectations around waterfall. So, one of the things that then immediately comes up is, okay, so that's great. Um, first of all, do you have bi-directional support? We do have bi-directional support, but what we find most people are choosing to do is treat project online or project or, or project server as the central repository and reporting tool, which of course means that you have a larger, broader view of everything that's going on in addition to the Agile teams uh, and their performance. That leads to the next question though, inevitably of, okay, so you've got all this information back over in Project Online, how are you going to report on that? How are you actually going to start to show progress uh, in a way that's going to make sense to people that for their part, don't want to learn how to use Project Online and, and want to move above that? Uh, that is where the glory of Power BI comes in. I don't, I, I'm gonna, I don't, I, how many people do you think are familiar with Power BI? Most? 
would guess that most people have at least some familiarity. I've got some nodding, so I'm not going to dwell on that. If anybody comes back and says, listen, um, you know, we, we'd like to talk a little bit more about Power BI. We're not really sure how, the, how, you, how that works or how licensing or anything like that works. We're happy to take questions about that. Um, but what we have is a, a classic Power BI report showing a, a, a PMO summary at a top level. Um, and you can see that we have uh, some more sophisticated forms of Gantt chart. Uh, you can show progress, uh, baseline, and you can show key milestones in, in the forms of the diamonds as they move along the bar as well. Um, we see cost and cost variance by project, work and work variance by project, and of course we can drill down and roll up to these things and it's all fully interactive. The, the great thing about this is, and what I want to emphasize, is by having a JIRA environment or Visual Studio incorporated into project, um, your status against these, these efforts and the roll-ups that go along with them are now kind of being automatically handled. Um, you're not having to write a report against a separate system. You're not having to make decisions about what that looks like. You are simply able to go back to your executives and report as you move up the line. Now, again, that having kind of been incorporated and things being all consolidated, you're also able to talk about things in terms of, of JIRA and in terms of uh, uh, Agile. So again, for those managers who are concerned with improving the performance of the development teams or other teams leveraging Agile, we're also able to show reports specifically for them, again, without having to incur a bunch of additional work. Um, Agile project status, again, we're able to talk about backlogs, user stories, sprints. Um, I, you know, it's, it's an interesting piece when you go to implement Agile. I, I think, George, if, if you correct me if I'm wrong, but um, one of the things that I've certainly seen is, is that um, people tend to believe that Agile is somehow going to be simpler or lighter weight, and I have found it to be exactly the opposite, that it actually requires at least as much work, if not more work, than doing traditional waterfall methodology. I, I think you're right because in a bad waterfall project, the work breakdown structure is created, printed on a giant printer, stuck on the wall, and then gathers dust. Where in an agile project, if you don't keep up with the ceremonies and artifacts that are part of agile, you, you're not, you're, in a way, you're not even able to work. So that discipline and structure needs to be um, worked. And so, yes, I think there's, in some ways, more work to be done. I think it's an interesting point because um, when we talk about project managers attempting or working with agile teams, one of the things is right is that it is very high touch in agile. It, yeah. it requires a lot of discipline. Um, I, I, I found, for example, you think that by shifting to estimating using story points instead of hours, you're going to get people giving you estimates more freely they're no more likely to give you estimates in story points than they were in hours, and they resist that process as much as they did before. Fair? Yes. Uh, one of the antidotes to that is really to turn the estimation over to the team, uh, get them used to a kind of wide band delta, which is, which is what story points are, and break stories down smaller and smaller. Some of the most effective Agile teams I've I've been on, try to break stories so they're uniformly sized, so you end up not even use story points. You just move stories across the board. Um, and this can leave development managers kind of at a loss, because in a, in a very functionally structured organization, development managers are used to getting in a room with, say, architects, and costing all the work and handing it off to the team. And uh, sort of demanding adherence to those costs, whereas in a, in a true Agile environment, the team needs to own the estimation. Yeah, so I, and I think that's one of the things that uh, project managers working with Agile teams struggle with as well, um, in that suddenly where they may be used to putting tasks on project schedules, those tasks are no longer going to appear on their project schedule. They're going to put a summary task that says, for example, sprint 17. And there may be 50 tasks underneath that, but they will all be in Agile, and they will be not hidden to the project manager, but not so much their concern. The Agile team will manage that. 
Yes, that's right. And um, that's why in our Agile features and projects, we, we allow this hybrid approach. And also, in an integration scenario, I, I, I imagine Wickersoft is careful about how much data you're shipping back and forth. Because that's right. Well, and again, best practices in our case, um, while we technically support bi-directional, for example, we only really say you should probably go one way, and honestly, it should probably be into project because there's more information around the project there than there is in, in an agile environment. But also to your point, the more data that starts going back and forth, maybe the less clarity you actually have. That's right. You, you, you need to ask about any report, who is the audience and what are they trying to get out of this report? And handing a list of detailed stories to an executive with story points on them, I don't think answers those two questions well. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Um, so, and and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna undercut what you just said by showing a report that is packed with data um, that may or may not be meaningful. The the key uh, that I want to kind of highlight when we talk about reports like this um, for people is is not that this report is immediately useful to somebody when they look at it, um, but when we get this information over back into Project Online we start enabling uh, reporting that is kind of hidden prior to uh, uh, actually um, integrating all this information. So we're able to kind of do these very fancy graphs that actually do say things about um, how much things cost and what the impact of certain pieces are on other things. It, it, it takes an analyst to look at some of these things. You would definitely want to re-summarize this up to an executive level and have them choose to come back down. Uh, but in the end, this is what we're really after enabling is this, this reporting that goes back up to the top that the PMO is used to saying, listen, um, this is the overall view of what we're seeing going on. Yes, we know the Agile teams uh, have a greater de degree of flexibility and are managing things differently, but we can still report at the top level about, about – um, about what ultimately we're going to be achieving uh, in it by the end of the year, for example. Yeah, this is great because it shows some of the power of Power BI. Okay. So, George, did you did you have anything you want to talk about further? I mean, we've reached kind of the end of the demo section of this. So, in summary, no, I think uh, uh, it's always a pleasure working with you, Scott. Oh, it is a pleasure. Yes, yeah. thank you. And um, is that a smirk or a smirk? yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, thank okay. you. Uh, and and it's all, it's always great to get together with customers and prospective customers and and just thought leaders in this space. Mike, do you have the closing deck so that we can show? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I think I have that. Let me actually. Be... You're presenting, Scott. Yeah, you have the deck. Uh, I do have. No, I don't have the deck. So let me not. Let me stop showing. And Victoria, if you could move the ball back to, um, back to George. George, that would be great. Not a problem. Great, thank you. Perfect. Uh, thank so. you. So um, we assume that at least some of you are going to have questions about how this works, things like cost, how much effort there is. Um, uh, but moreover, maybe even just, listen, um, we're interested in implementing Visual Studio uh, to solve some of these problems but we're coming at it from a, a PMO orientation. How would we go about doing that? Um, we're very happy at Microsoft to work with you. We are a, a Microsoft Gold certified partner, of course. Um, anybody that wants to ask us about where our name comes from, we're happy to answer that as well. Uh, anything else, George? No, that's it. Uh, I'd like to also give out my uh, email address, which is george.bullock, like Sandra Bullock, at Microsoft.com. I think we can make sure that everybody who attended yeah, and registered great. will get your email address yeah, as well. So feel free to write. Uh, I'm in this space because I'm passionate about it. And uh, so I always enjoy having discussions about Microsoft Project, uh, project management, portfolio management, uh, Agile, anything, any questions you have, feel free to write to me. All right. Thank you very much.